snack sits, sits completely snug in the wing. And the left leg as well is completely snug in the wing. Controls are behaving quite nice, nicely. I can see no oscillatory motions of any description in them. Turning to the left and then I put in the case down, no? Okay, yeah, give me time, I want to photograph it. The elevator is about three degrees or four degrees up as far as I can see from here. Ailerons are nice and fresh. The calls here seem to be quite normal and no problem. Wind is 40 to 50 degrees, 10 to 15 feet. So, 201, Toronto Tower, two to land, wheels down, lock 32. Parameter is touchdown. Watching its historic first flight, the huge crowd of Avro employees and Air Force personnel greeted the arrival of the Arrow at its flight base. Because the first Arrow was produced from such complete production tooling, Additional Arrow aircraft are being produced without the delay which usually follows successful first flight of a new aircraft. The success of the design is due in large measure to the intensive testing which has formed a major part of the program so far. Testing on the ground is continuing step by step with testing in the air. This full-scale structural test rig simulates flight loads on a static test aircraft, making it possible to predict many of the actual effects encountered in flight. These static tests naturally assume great significance as ever greater demands are made of the aircraft in flight. On its third flight, the Arrow flew supersonically. On its seventh flight, it exceeded 1,000 miles an hour while climbing. This is still well within the maximum capability of the aircraft which will be achieved during the development flight test program. With its advanced electronic system and guided missiles, this supersonic Sentinel is designed to guard the Arctic approaches to the Western Hemisphere. The success of the Avro Arrow marks a new chapter in the history of the Canadian aviation industry and a new contribution to Western defense. <laughs> 